Hi students, today we are going to be learning how to use Tinkercad to create a monogram stamp. So you can see in front of you right now a finished monogram stamp and we're going to walk through the steps of how you get to this final product. So I'm going to X out of this. We are going to be using Tinkercad, so you first go to tinkercad.com and use the login that your teacher provides you. One thing to know about our logins is that we are sharing this account. That means that you will see everyone else's monograms and other people's projects down here in the bottom part. And it is very important that you only edit your design. So just leave all of the other designs alone even if they look like something that maybe hasn't been finished or isn't going to be finished, just leave it alone and only edit yours. So the first step is to click where it says create new design, and it's gonna open up what's called your work plane. And to start your stamp, you're going to need the base of your stamp, and we're all going to just create a cylinder as our base. So over to the right, you'll drag a cylinder over onto your work plane. And when you do, you'll notice that it has all these little white and black boxes and a little black cone up at the top. You're gonna to use that to resize, use the little white boxes to resize your cylinder so that it looks more like a flat circle, right? I'm going to um, make it a little bit thinner. You really don't need it to be super thick but you don't want it to be completely flat either. Okay, so once you have that part done, you are really done working on this layer. So now you have to create a new layer, and the way that you do that is by making a new work plane. So you go to work plane, and you drag it over onto the top. Now this is where you're actually going to design what your monogram looks like. And of course, the main part of a monogram is the letters. We are going to use the scribble tool to create our letters. So I'm going to drag over a scribble, which doesn't look like a letter at all right now. But when I let go of it, it's going to open this window so that I can now draw. Now you can, um, because you're using a touchscreen computer, just use your finger. And that's what I would recommend. So maybe on a piece of paper, you've drawn out what you want your letter to look like, and now you're going to recreate that on the screen. So I'm going to make my letter A. Give it a little swoop. I'm going to do the other side of my A. And then the middle of my A. All right, so there's my A. And I'm going to click done. Now, of course, you have lots of editing buttons down at the bottom. Um, if you make a mistake along the way, you can erase part of it. You can click the undo button. You can clear it completely. But I'm going to say done. And now, instead of a scribble, I have a letter A. And you can see that it also has these boxes so that I can resize it, or stretch it if I need to. Now I'm going to do the next part of my monogram. I'm going to drag over a new scribble. I'm going to do a letter P. And then I'm going to click done. So again, I can move this letter P around wherever I want it to go. I can make it larger. And then I'm going to draw my final letter. So I drag over another scribble. And and you can see I didn't quite connect that. So I'm going to try to connect that a little better there. All right, so there's my R. Then I'm going to click Done. And again, I can move this around wherever I need it to be. Now, you'll notice that right now, my um, letters are in order that I want them to be in. But when you make a stamp, it has to be a mirror image. 
So you have to order them in the opposite order than what you would actually want. So my R is going to be last, last but really first <laughs> on this version. And then my A would be in this position. Okay. You also have to flip your letters. So I'm going to, to flip my letters, I'm going to use this, I'm going to click on the letter, and then I'm going to use this little arrow up here to rotate. So when I click and hold and drag, the letter starts to spin. And you'll notice there is a number counting. You want to do a 180 degree turn. So I'm going to go all the way to 180, past it, let go. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing with the P. Rotate 180. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the R. Now let's move this over a little bit so we can see what we're doing. All right, so once you've flipped all your letters, once again, you can go in and move them around to where they need to be. And then the final thing you need to do is to click on each letter, and you'll see that each letter has a little black cone at the top. You want to sink this down just a little bit into your shape. I'm going to click on my home button so that I can zoom out and kind of see what this looks like. And now that I've zoomed out, I really don't like the way that it is, so I'm going to rearrange it a little bit. And then the other thing you can do is you can touch your screen and kind of look at your stamp from all sides. And what you really want to make sure is that after you have lowered your letters into your circle, you want to make sure that they're all about the same height, because if they're not, then it's not going to stamp correctly onto your paper. You want them all to be as close as possible to the same height, and that looks pretty good. So now that I've done that, I'm going to drag my work plane back over, and that is my stamp. Now, you will um, talk about other kinds of designs. You may end up wanting to add something around the edges of uh, your stamp as well. And you could either do that again with the scribble or you could do it with the other shapes that are over here to the side. You don't wanna make it so cluttered that you've lost your design concept. Um, you may even wanna just use the squiggle to make some special decorations around your monogram. But anytime you do that, you remember you're working on that second layer and then sinking those shapes down in. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is how to name your shape. And this is really important for me in the library so that I can get your print back to you. So you're going to click up here where it says change name. And I want you to change it to your first and last name and then put your teacher's name. So if I was in Mr. Weaver's class, I would put Weaver. Okay. That way I will know when I print it that this belongs to Andy Clemens and Andy Clemens is in Mr. Weaver's class. Once you have renamed, it saves as you go. So when I click up here to the top on Tinkercad, it'll take me back to the gallery and you will see my original design over here. And then the one that I just made for you is here. So if I go back in and I want to edit this again, I'm going to click where it says tinker this and it will take me right back in to my design so that I can keep working on it. When your design is done, this is where I will go in the library to download your file so that we can 3D print your stamp. If you have any extra questions for me, 
um, I will be happy to answer, but I'm sure you will figure out a lot of things as you go. And when you figure out something that works for you, share it with someone else so that they can learn from you too.